It's day two of our Kashipa journey and this is Monday and this is what Hospet looks like. So we are stationed in Hospet today morning. We came from Lepakshi temple. Yesterday we had a nice rest at Hotel Priyadarshini. Uh, check it out if you're here. So we wanted to see what's ahead. So we go grab breakfast, uh, nice idli dosa, that's what we have here. And we're all talking about what lies ahead, what we can see in Hampi uh, after some time. So off we go. And it's a nice ride from Hospet to Hampi, which is about 12 kilometers away. And we see hills on three sides. Uh, one of them is the Anjaneya mountain, which is, according to legend, the birthplace of Lord Hanuman. And if you know your Ramayana, you know that we are close to Kishkinda, where the Warner king Sugriva led along with Hanuman. And if you know Kishkinda, you know that we are close to the Tungabhadra river, which is of course a big attraction in the area. Ah, there it is, the Tungabhadra river, or river Pampa as it was called during the Ramayana times. Now, Hampi is different things to different people. And forgive us because we're going to skip past the Vithala temple and the Virupaksha temple and set our own agenda for Hampi. So the first place that we're going to is the great royal enclosure from back in the day. And as we approach the entrance, we see the Mahanavmi Dibba. From afar, it looks like a giant stone stage. But when we get on it, we see what it was in the past. A stage from which the king could see war games, musical performances, uh, army march pasts that would go around the stage. And he would see it from atop. Right next to the stone stage, are the secret chambers where in the past important discussions would take place where no one could hear them from the outside. Can you see? We are here at the Mahanavmi Dibba uh, of Hampi. And like much of the ruins, uh, here too we have uh, storytelling being depicted on the walls in the form of panels. Um, on this particular wall right here, if you look at the panels here, there's a very interesting story being told and something that needs to be um, said. If you can see here at the panels, these are actually women fighters uh, because back in the day men would fight the battles and the mortality rate for men would be high so women would then be trained uh, almost like as though it was a reserve force so you can see the paneling here like women are being trained in uh, to hunt uh, you can see uh, uh, the women being trained uh, to use the bow and arrow so they would actually be almost uh, be prepared like a backup uh, during wars and if you come all the way here you can see there's a particularly illustrative uh, tale being depicted here right here you can see um, there are actually a couple of men uh, who have been captured by the women force um, and they've been brought to the queen in the absence of the king so this is uh, especially illustrative of the fact that uh, how women would sort of take over uh, in the absence of men. That's that's what we learned from our local guide here. What we have here is a feat of ancient engineering. Because this right here, what you see extending all the way up is uh, a stone water pipeline. There is a water body uh, right upstream about three kilometers away from which the water is drawn. 
and it used to flow all the way through the stone pipeline passing uh, through this space uh, going all the way here and going right into what is called the Pushkarani. Um, if you see a little distance away, uh, there used to be uh, the shrine of a goddess and this Pushkarni is actually associated with that shrine. So um, if you see this, uh, this whole site was actually found after an excavation done in about 1983-1984. Uh, this whole thing is made out of black stone and it was found there with uh, these stones that have, have numbering on them. Uh, the numbering is in Tamil with a little bit of Sanskrit uh, and in the excavation done at that time this was found. Now the specialty of this numbering here on these stones is that you could actually pick them apart and then take it somewhere else and assemble them. Uh, so that's what uh, the numbering actually helps. Uh, so this could actually easily be recreated anywhere else uh, if required. Um, so it's just um, here in Hampi, just the feat of engineering that used to happen all those years back really astounds me. Uh, what else lies ahead? Let's just take a look. I'm here deep in the royal enclosure at Hampi. The sun is almost overhead and it's freaking hot right now. But at one point in time, this would have been a really cool place. Because this where I'm standing is, or was back in the day, the public bath. And to know how huge the bath is, you've only got to see it to believe it. This place now here locally is referred to as the public bath. But make no mistake, this was no place for the public. It used to be a bath for the royalty. The kings and the queens would get together and probably have a swim. The water would come in from through the pipeline system there, made out of stone, and it would flow right into this bath. And not just for the royalty residing here, you would have uh, foreign statesmen coming here, mingling with the local king and queen, and they would all sit down here and probably take a bath. But not just for bath, this place also probably witnessed a lot of swimming competitions. Um, this swimming pool, if you look at it, this would be quite a challenge for Michael Phelps because it's almost bigger than an Olympic sized swimming pool. And it wasn't like the water here was dirty, they, they had a pretty neat drainage system through which they used to clean the water as well. The swimming competitions that I spoke about that are known to be held here during the time probably saw 10 to 12 swimmers uh, take their line and swim parallelly across and compete with one another and given the time the competition was rather fierce i would reckon and right here you can see there's a platform now the structure on top was probably reconstructed by the asi but this existed from much before from here, a judge could have probably sat there, had a great view of the pool and judged the competition. Or you may have had a shrine, for instance, where a local deity or god resided. It's a pretty neat structure, I would reckon. I'm now rising up the stairs that were once probably taken by the Vijayanagara king at the height of Hampi's powers. These stairs are mighty and they're almost making me pant. But these stairs lead up to where the king at the time used to sit. It was probably a throne and he would preside over this huge platform, this huge space, the Darbar Hall. This Darbar Hall had rows of pillars of which only the base remain today. These pillars would rise up to the roof, which sadly no longer exists. Think of this Darbar Hall as the Vidhan Sauda of the past. And it's a mighty space that you must definitely check out. It's 
been about six hours of non-stop humping, but it's already the afternoon, so we go get lunch. Satiated from the lunch, we now decide to head to another part of the royal enclosure, which is the Hazara Rama Temple. It used to be the private temple of the king, and is set to hold the epic Ramayana in its stone. You know, you might go to a temple to pray to the local deity residing in there, or you might appreciate the architecture, or you might look to find some peace and meditation. But the experience of actually looking at wall art inside the temple and trying to connect the dots and relating the story to something that you've learned or uh, experienced or enjoyed back in your childhood is just especially joyous and satisfying. And for that, I'm at the right place because I'm here right outside the Hazare Rama temple. Uh, and this temple is especially known for the stories uh, abound on the panels on the walls. Now, this is something here that you might find especially interesting. And you might all remember because you see, here's a young man and he's carrying his parents, right? His old parents. Uh, and just saying that uh, for anyone uh, who's experienced uh, childhood stories would know that this is Shravan and he's carrying his old parents. In the panel right above, you see that he's trying to take water from a water body for his parents, right? But there you find Dashrata, who mistakes him for an elephant who is drinking water and kills him. Then on the panel above, you see that he realizes his folly, his mistake, and goes to Shravan's parents and seeks forgiveness. But what then happens is that the parents actually curse him and uh, tell him that he would face the same suffering and sorrow uh, that the parents did in the future. If you just go all the way across here to this panel, you'd see that the story continues because you have uh, Dashrata here, who's experienced the curse and he's doing a yagna. And uh, while doing the yagna, he's handed a bowl of payasam, which he then hands over to his three wives, right? And then as a result of that, he has four sons. And no prizes for guessing who the sons are. It's Rama, Lakshmana, uh, Bharata and Shatrugna. And that is the foundation story of Ramayana, of course. The temple as it stands today is a little different from what it was back in the day. Because earlier there was only a sanctum, a pillared hall and an Ardhavantapa. But later renovation led to an open porch and beautiful pillars. We didn't even have to look at our watches because these beautiful structures told us what time it is through their beautiful shadows. But we need to head to our next stop in Hampi. The Anant Shaina temple lies just outside Hospet and it's very hard to miss as you ride on the road. I was surprised to see so few visitors there because this is actually a gem of a temple. As I walked in, I was eager in anticipation as to what I'll see there. Entering, I was greeted by none other than Hanuma. And I saw the temple packed with pillars and with the sight of that very rare Brahma sculpture on the pillar. Then I looked up and inside and I saw this humongous Garbhagriha. And this is probably the largest of any temple you'll see in the world, certainly in India. It was quite dark inside and so it was hard to see anything. We had our flashlights turned on. Whenever people visit Hampi, there are a set of monuments that they always go to or temples like the Virupaksha temple or uh, the assembly hall uh, near the royal enclosure. But there's this lesser known gem uh, just about five, six kilometers from uh, the main area 
and this is the An Ananta Shayana Gudi, which is in the town of Ananta Shayana, not too far from the main town. Now, this town is special in many ways because one, uh, if you go by the Marxist interpretation, you often hear that the kings build temples to display their might and their strength. But this goes against that notion because this one was actually commissioned by Krishna Devaraya himself in memory of his son um, who was poisoned. So that is the reason why this uh, beautiful temple was commissioned. You'll also see a very striking feature if you head inside. You'll see what is perhaps one of the largest Garbhagrihas ever in the world, uh, but most certainly in India, at least. So if you come to Hampi, you should not give this one a miss. Just a beautiful temple to be a part of. Now we're wrapping our day here in Hampi and we're heading on our way to Kudala Sangama. So we'll be back with you with an update on that. See you.